Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. You are now watching the video of Reproductive System Part 4. In this video, we will explore about the fascinating process involved in early human development. Overall, early human development can be divided into three phases. It begins with fertilization, which involves four stages. There are a chromosomal reaction, cortical reaction, egg activation, and fusion of sperm and egg nuclei. The second phase is embryonic development, which consists of three stages. The first stage is cleavage, and implantation occur at the end of cleavage prior to the next stage, gastrulation. Following gastrulation is organogenesis. The third phase before the baby is ready to be born is fetal development. The phase comprises of trimester 1, trimester 2, and trimester 3. So let's have a detailed look on each of it to further understand all the processes in human development. Let's begin with the first stage, fertilization. Fertilization is the fusion between sperm and egg. Both gametes are haploid and the fusion produces zygote, which is diploid. And this process takes place somewhere here, in the fallopian tube. This diagram shows the clearer image of the fertilization location in fallopian tube. The first stage in fertilization, a chromosomal reaction. The mammalian egg is enclosed by a protective layer consists of zona pellucida and the granulosa cells. To penetrate these layers, sperm undergoes an acrosomal reaction. The digestive enzyme in the acrosome, located in the sperm head, releases to digest the protective layer to reach the plasma membrane of the egg. Fusion occurs between the plasma membrane of the sperm and the egg. The following stage is cortical reaction. It is stimulated by the previous stage, the fusion of sperm membrane and egg membrane. The cortical granules releases enzyme to alter the sperm's receptor on the zona pellucida, thus prevent polyspermy to ensure only one sperm can fertilize the egg. Stage 3 is egg activation. Within few minutes after the sperm entry, a series of metabolic changes occur within the egg, such as increasing aerobic respiration, activation of certain maternal enzymes and proteins, and the nucleus of the egg is stimulated to complete its meiosis too. As you have learned previously, the egg is actually a secondary oocyte which arrested at prophase of the meiosis too and only completed the meiotic division if fertilization occur. The last stage is the fusion of sperm and egg nuclei where during this stage, the haploid male and female nucleus fuse to form the diploid nucleus of the zygote. DNA replication occurs in preparation for the first cell division. Here is the overview of all stages in fertilization begins with a chromosomal reaction when the sperm penetrates the protective layer of the egg by secreting digestive enzyme, the hardening of zona pellucida by cortical reaction to block polyspermy, the egg activation that induces by sperm entry and the formation of diploid zygote by both sperm and egg nuclei. Now we move to the subsequent phase of human development. Embryonic development. About 24 hours after fertilization, zygote undergoes cleavage, a series of rapid mitotic division without a growth phase. That means, although the cell number increases, the size of embryo does not increase. At about 32 cell stage, a solid ball cell called morula is formed. The cell division continues and eventually forms into blastosis. Blastosis consists of outer layer of cells, trophoblasts, 
that surrounds the large fluid-filled cavity called blastosome and the inner cell mass. This diagram shows the cleavage stage undergoes by zygote, forming multiple number of cells without growing in size. In mammalian, blastula known as blastosis. By day 7, after fertilization, the blastosis begins the process of implantation. The trophoblast proliferates, forming finger-like projection known as chorionic villi and embeds in the endometrium of the uterus. The trophoblast will give rise to the chorion and amnion that surrounds the embryo. Chorion will develop into placenta. Amnion will develop into amniotic sac filled with amniotic fluid and cushions the embryo. Blastosis secretes human chorionic gonadotropin hormone, signaling the corpus luteum to increase the secretion of estrogen and progesterone. These stimulate continued development of the endometrium and placenta. The formation of placenta not only derived from chorion as mentioned earlier, but it also comes from the uterine tissue. It is the important organ of exchange between mother and embryo that's separated by a membrane. Its function is to provide nutrients and oxygen to the fetus and remove waste from the fetus which then excreted by the mother. The umbilical cord develops and connects the embryo and placenta. After week 11, placenta secretes estrogen and progesterone to maintain pregnancy. Placenta also takes over the function of secreting ACG to continue developing the endometrium layer. This graph shows the hormonal changes throughout the pregnancy. For the first trimester, we can observe ACG blood levels spike due to the implanted blastosis secretes this hormone that signals its presence. And the function is to maintain the secretion of estrogen and progesterone by corpus luteum. Some ACG passes from the maternal blood into urine where it can be detected by early pregnancy tests. Placenta is fully developed and fully functioned as it entering the final weeks of the first trimester. During this time, blastosis grows and develops into fetus, thus HCG secretion drop. Placenta takes over the secretion of estrogen and progesterone and the hormone level gradually increasing as the placenta continues to grow throughout the pregnancy. These hormones at its highest peak at the end of the third trimester. At the same time, there is still a little amount of ACG secreted by this placenta. All these hormones undergoes a rapid decline upon delivery of the baby. The next stage is gastrulation that occur in week 2 and 3. During this stage, the embryo cells differentiated into three tissue layer and is called gastrula. The outer layer is ectoderm. This tissue gives rise to the nervous system and the epidermis of the skin. The middle layer is mesoderm, which gives rise to most of the organs. And the inner layer is endoderm, and this tissue gives rise to glands and organ linings. The third stage is organogenesis. This is the process where the organs are formed from three job layers of gastrula to become specific structures. Brain and spinal cord among the first organ to develop. About 24 hours after fertilization, cleavage occur, forming blastosis. By day 7, blastosis implanted at the endometrium wall and begins to form gastrula which later undergoes organogenesis. The organ formation begins and continues throughout the gestation period. Let's have a closer look on the fetal development in every trimester. During the first trimester, central nervous system develops, consists of brain and spinal cord, which derive from the neural tube. The heart and other organs also start to form, and the heart begins to beat. 
The facial features continue to develop. Tiny buds that eventually grow into arms and legs are forming together with eyes, ears, fingers and toes. Circulatory system, reproductive system and digestive system begin to develop in week 3 and 4. By the end of second month, the embryo is referred to as fetus. In second trimester, the basic body plan develops further. Now, the sex of the fetus can be distinguished. Fetus heartbeat can be heard by a stethoscope. Eyebrows, eyelashes and fingernails begin to form. Most joints and bones are developed. Fetus become active and moves freely in the amniotic cavity. By the end of trimester 2, the fetus can open and blink its eyes. The third trimester is a period of growth and organ maturation. Due to that, the fetus weight doubles several times. Most of the major nerve tracts in brain are formed. The baby skin becomes smoother and fine body hair and scalp hair grows. The baby also already can see light and can hear. After week 37, the baby is considered full term and ready to function on their own. The baby's head turned down and may engage into pelvic area as preparation to be born. Parturition or childbirth is the ending of the pregnancy that normally lasts about 38 to 40 weeks. It is a process of bringing forth the child from the uterus. The high level of estrogen secreted by placenta increase the number of receptors for oxytocin in the uterine wall. Oxytocin is the hormone that stimulates uterine contraction. At the end of pregnancy, high level of estrogen and oxytocin concentration stimulates strong uterine contraction. The parturition is divided into three stages, dilation stage, expulsion stage, and placental stage. The first stage, dilation. Contraction of the uterus move the fetus head, descend it to pelvic and towards the cervix, causing cervix to dilate to a maximum diameter of 10 cm. Amnion ruptures releases amniotic fluid. The second stage, expulsion. The cervix become fully dilated. The baby passes through cervix and vagina. The baby is delivered. And the third stage, placental. The placenta are loosened from the lining of the uterus by another series of contraction. These tissues are expelled out from the vagina. The childbirth process mediated by a positive feedback mechanism of hormonal control. At the end of trimester 3, the baby is fully grown and stretches the wall of the uterus. This stress induces a rise in the levels of estrogen. High estrogen concentration increases the number of oxytocin receptor on the uterus. When the fetus head presses against the cervix, it stimulates the pituitary gland to produce oxytocin. Oxytocin stimulates the uterine muscle to contract, initiating the birthing process. Oxytocin also stimulates the releasing of prostaglandin by the placenta, which triggers further uterine contraction. Contractions will stop when the childbirth is complete and the baby is delivered. Lactation is the production of milk for nourishing the young. Each breast consists of 15 to 20 lobes of glandular tissue. Gland cells are arranged in grape-like clusters called alveoli. Ducts from each cluster join to form a single duct called lactiferous sinus, terminate on the surface of nipples. The alveolar gland functions in producing milk and passing it to the lactiferous duct. Breast milk provides ideal nutrition and passive immunity for the infant. For the first few days after delivery, the mammary gland produces a fluid called colostrum. Colostrum contains proteins and antibodies, but a little fat. 
nursing stimulate anterior pituitary to secrete prolactin that stimulates milk production. Nursing also stimulates the posterior pituitary to release oxytocin that stimulates ejection of milk from the alveoli into the duct. Lactation also encourages malnutrient contraction to return the uterus to its pre-pregnancy size and induces metabolism of the mother. That's all for Chapter 4. I hope this video helps you to understand better about this topic. Thank you for watching this video. Bye!